Great to be here. Two days ago, played a football game against the Italians. I'm sure you heard that five times by now, but we won. Very happy about it. Today, we had a 5K run. So it's great to be here. Great to be in Hawaii. You know, uh, you do business, you have fun with friends, uh, close some deals. Always good to be in Hawaii. Always good to be with the PTC. Uh, today, it's my pleasure to introduce my friend Reju. Entrepreneur Reju Vigisna, based in California, Silicon Valley, is the chairman and managing director of Sifi Technologies. Uh, which was the first private ISP in India. Raju acquired Sifi back in 2005 and has since transformed it into one of the largest integrated ICT solutions and service companies on the Indian uh, subcontinent with a clientele of uh, 8,500 plus businesses. Raju holds several patents in uh, microprocessor and multiprocessor technologies. Raju has a master degree in computer engineering from Wayne State University Michigan, and a bachelor degree in electronics engineering from Bangalore University. Please welcome Raju. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It is a great pleasure to be here. And this is my 10th year attending the PTC. And you know, whenever I come to here, I see the, my friends like Muhammad, and I see new faces. And as you can see, how see the agenda of the PTCs is evolving every time I come to here. We started as a telecom, then data centers, cloud, and mobile, artificial intelligence, and the machine learning. So it's also transforming the whole conference itself in the last 10 years I see it. And, and I want to talk about my personal life also, how we transformed. I'm a transformer. You know, I started as a designing microprocessors, multiprocessors, then servers, then doing a telecom, data centers, and then we are working on new things, artificial intelligence and machine learning. All these technologies helping the industries and the government functions and in the future maybe in the galaxy. So it's not just me. What I see it is how either all of you or the companies you are working, how we are helping this digital transformation one way or other in these days. I don't want to go through these thing numbers. You know, again, I think you know, everybody understands this digital transformation, what is happening across the globe, the kind of you know, endless numbers, how much is uh, transformation, how much is uh, global digital marketing is growing, how the cloud players providing year over the year the growth on the infrastructure side and the services side. But I will take you some interesting num numbers, how the India is transforming in this, in this uh, transformation, you know. So, India being 1.3 billion people, and it is in a major change of the digital transformation services. You know, if you look at 10 years back, it's about 40 plus million internet users. Now it's become more than half a billion internet users. Beyond this, you know, what is you saw uh, in 2006, the government decided to pull 86% of the cash out of the system, and they created the payment gateway, payment uh, transactions. So with that, before that, in 2016, there, will be, there used to be 100,000 transactions per month, become all of the sudden in 2017, became 76 million transactions per month. Similarly, you know, there are other uh, digital services, a digital stack government is working. One is called Aadhaar for one point, one, 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 uh, the, more than one billion people getting a digital identity. And the second is GST, is a goods and service tax. Across all the states, we introduced a common digital transformation, and it's a goods and taxes law. Third is... Uh, you see the uh, payment gateways, like it's called a Beam, application called Beam, where you can you know, uh, introduce, it's a low-cost 
uh, government introduced into the banking system where you can do the transactions and available and it's uh, Pradhan Mantri's Jan Yog program. What is the deal is before introducing this low-cost digital banking to reach all the people, what are the, all the governments giving subsidies to the people who need it? And for every 100 rupees, it's reaching only 22 rupees to the people. There was a bureaucracy, whatever it is causing, 78 rupees is not reaching to the end people. With this kind of digital technologies, it's reaching there. And now also one other application government is introduced is uh, GEM. GEM is government e-marketing place. All the government purchases is happening to the procurement of this e-marketing. That is also, so looking at all these things, what is India is driving, becoming, you know, second largest population country into a digital first country, it's driving. And now, what is, as an industry, what I see it is, how do we drive to the customers? How do we engage with the customers? So we want to make our customers to be more digital innovators, to be competitive in the market, what is they doing, and also to survive. What is we are doing in India, and also across the globe, now customers are getting more and more in the services in a cloud. And also, it's not anymore just a relationship. It is a partnership, starting from strategy, planning, and servicing, and design, and support. And that's what's happening in all this digital transformation. And now, is a digital transformation is a choice we can adopt or not? Digital transformation is a must. You know, a company with a digital transformation can be scalable, the benefits, and also the speed and the cost effect effectiveness, flexibility, and uh, reliability. The, the organizations which are not adopting digital transformation will be less cost effective, less competitive, and less agile. And what I want to do is from there, I want to bring some of the robust partnerships we executed in the last few years into, you know, show you how this transformation is helping a country like in India. And these transformations can be in different sizes, different shapes. It could be a small, or it could be an incremental, or it could be a completely different change. So I'll go through a couple of cases. One interesting is Department of the Post. This is one of the biggest postal service on the earth. Connecting, there is 156,000 post offices across India. Phase one, we partnered with Department of the Post to integrate, network integrate, first 30,000 post offices. So with the presence of the, uh, their location, presence, point of presence, and the you know, network integration, now the Department of the Post becoming a, a, a bank and also an insurance company and also became an e-commerce logistic company with that kind of applications. Now this is what the services Department of the Post can offer to all citizens of India is become 21st century services. That means it's a reach to you know, underserved areas it's improved. I want to take the second case study. It is a uh, Uttar Pradesh. It is the biggest uh, state in India. Is as big as uh, Brazil's population. Want to transform its uh, electricity uh, power? How the billing process work? It used to have a small uh, platforms across the state. When they decided they want to build one com you know, integrated solution, one billing process, we transformed that one into a, a web-based service with a private cloud. What is that offered them is, and also the kind of business model they worked with us as a pay-by-bill. That means it's not only we transform the technology side, and also the business also is transformed instead of spending you know, money upfront they did it by a bill, 
we are charging. So what is this kind of things is tells us as a customers now is interested more and more paying as a consumption model instead of a inventory. And what I see is this kind of transformations is going to go more and more and, uh, and you know, a penetration of this kind of market, it's going to be a long way to go. And what is the benefits of this? It's going to be full transparency and customer satisfaction and improved operational efficiency in, with one cloud platform. The third example is very interesting. You know, we are partnered when, uh, with uh, Variant uh, Medical Systems, which is a, a prominent player in the, for a cancer treatment with the radiotherapy. When we deployed their software as a service in a cloud. So Variant, you know, it's based in uh, Palo Alto, close to the Stanford, started by professors, and they have the biggest market share in the cancer radiation therapy. When we launch uh, this product at their, uh, you know, manufacturing, uh, the, they, they're the biggest manufacturer with their devices in our uh, in uh, clinics, cancer clinics. But we took the, you know, oncology information and the patient schedule into the cloud. Before the patients, cancer patients used to come to the clinics to have uh, these detailed discussions with the doctors. And now with this cloud platform, what is the patients? They don't need to come to the clinic for the, unless the treatment, and they can do a lot of the uh, things on the cloud, having the oncology information and the schedules. On top of it, what we did is we partnered with American Institute, the uh, Oncology Institute from Pittsburgh, and having this information on a cloud helped to get the best doctors available in uh, Pittsburgh, looking at this information and giving the right radi radiation therapy to the patients. What is, that what is this application did in India is, it's not just only major towns where we can deploy this kind of technology, we can go to tier two, tier three cities. That means it's going to be more people have accessible this kind of a treatment. One is cost effectiveness. Second is and reaching the more volume. So this is, uh, you know, is kind of a changing the, the way the complete cancer radiation therapy is, can be deployed a country like in India. So what does that mean? We, as a telecom, we used to be more of a trading, you know, voice minutes or a links or a bandwidth. But that is not going to be anymore as we're getting more into more into deep. What does that mean is our partnerships, it has to be, we have to be engaged with the partnership from, from the beginning and we have to be developed their part of the strategic plan and then you know, design implementation and they're looking for when do we deploy this? When is the digital transformation sense? What and how? And we need to guide the, our customers to be more effective and make them to more successful. So, like I said, this is uh, the transformation can be in a different shapes and sizes. So, somebody making me an upgrade of the core IT systems, that could be a simple, and somebody making a refresh as incremental, and somebody doing a complete digitization and automation. So these. These things can be completely in a different way people are directing from taking the digitization. So as a telecom or a data center or a cloud provider, what is the opportunities for us is we are doing a digital in infrastructure as a utility model. Then also it's not just offering the services in a utility model, but it also has uh, the business model. It could be a business outcome aligned, or it could be usage based, or it could be selling as a component. Let me take an example, you know, depending on, like, like uh, we worked in the, our uh, Uttar Pradesh Power Corporation, we are doing a billing for a, as in Amra, the people are billing adapted in this technology, we are getting paid. Or if you look at 
people selling the cloud, uh, no, selling as a VM as a service, are you doing a gigabit a transfer, or you're talking a gigabyte storage? So that is a component aligned. And it could be a business outcome. That means, you know, if the business is successful, you can get a, a percentage of the uh, outcome. So this is offers us you know, very different kind of business cases we have to be ready in this transformation. So now, PTC, uh, what is uh, our bring, you know, ecosystem to the customers? The way I look at it is, we as a telecom players, starting as a telecom, then having data centers, having cloud platforms, we are transforming. And the people who have a complete set of you know, more integrated things, they are going to be have the best uh, results or best outcomes for their business. And also, as a transforming from a telecom into these areas, and also we need to spend more time with the customer, align, understanding the transformation. That means we have to be more scale up. That means understanding the customer needs and the scale out. That means we have to create more than the telecom services. So having that kind of a partnership and then having, a, you know, this is, only, this is digital transformation. It's not a, just a customer alone can do it. That means we have to be very technically challenged. And also, we need to develop a partnership in the, you know, the way we develop across the you know, uh, globe. And, and then having a, having a best practices understanding and also the customer uh, you know, case studies. Like you know, I presented three case studies. I would like to see more case studies coming out of how this transformation is working. And having those kind of things and uh, having uh, you know, focused more into the depth, what I see is the complete digital transformation is going to happen. And I want to thank you. And this is a great uh, opportunity for me to present how the transformation. And the way I look at it is the PTC, as it started as a, I was talking, as a Pacific Telecom Council, it should be more of a platform for a transformation. That's what I would like to see, how this platform is going to transform. And we are here to develop that kind of a relationship as a transformer. And all of you, you know, we are looking forward to you know, integrate these solutions into the, as a transformer. And that is my thank you. And I wish you all the best in 2018. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again next year. Thank you.